What is up, guys? It is the sports nerd Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Radio, part of NGSC Sports, and being shown on Coast to Coast Entertainment. Uh, I have decided to, instead of doing my Friday show, have this show join NGSC Sports. So, again, you guys will be hearing me talking about the sponsorships for that network as well. Um, this show is sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com and ArenaEats.app. The Walker Report is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website, ArenaEats.app, for the ultimate fan experience at your favorite sports venue. Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? And we are also, again, guys, sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. It is the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization decluttering and pet sitting it's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life and guys remember zen spaces begins with you be kind to yourself and one another and if you would like some in the zone gear head over to squadlocker.com type in in the zone sports talk radio to present the store for you to be able to purchase your gear uh we also guys are on we have a youtube channel called the sports center bradley walker which by the way I want to give major props to the 42 people that watched our show from last week, that four hour broadcast. We were watching the Bucks and uh, the Cowboys plus talking sports at the same time. So I give a lot of props to the 42 people that watched us on YouTube. We do appreciate that. And all the people that watch us live here on Facebook as well. But let's go ahead and get this show started. Let me bring in both of my fantastic show hosts. Gentlemen, how are we doing this evening? All right. Smoking, smoking ribs. Yeah. <laughs> and I know in your area, but in my area, we have the Giants versus the uh, Washington game on right now. That's over on uh, my local station over here. I yeah. would, but I'm not upstairs right now. I'm outside. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's, I think he's outside. Yeah, he's outside at the media moment. <laughs> yes. Uh, enjoying Mother Nature as we speak. I, <laughs> it's very pretty. Awesome. It's getting dark. I'm probably going to have to turn the light on <laughs> it is September. It is September. It is finally, finally cooling off enough out here to have be out here all night. I'm hoping to be there, but in your state in uh, in February. Yeah, we're looking forward to having you in town. Yeah, I'm, I'll be there. I hope looking all right. forward to being there. So, guys, anything you want to get on? You want to talk about uh, anything uh, in particular? I have. UFC, I have U.S. soccer, I have WWE, boxing, anything like that. Boxing. Let's start, start, start boxing. boxing. Go with boxing. All right. So the only article, I have, guys, is um, that um, Mr. Tyson Fury warns Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua he will never lose. He will always be mm. unbeaten. So mm. that is what he That's said. a bold so, statement. Overconfident, really. That is what he said. He will not lose another fight. He will not lose a fight. So, I know he's got one. I, the Deontay Wilder fight's coming up within a, what, November or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's mid-November. No, it's it's the it's the right after. It's the Saturday after Black Friday. It's Saturday Thanksgiving no, weekend. I think, I'm, before, I think it's the weekend before, actually. Okay. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, November uh, 20th, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yeah. All right. In Vegas. And then he goes overseas to fight Joshua? Or is that going to happen on U.S. soil? I don't know. It might happen in, it might happen in the U.K. Because he's from the U.K. originally. Yeah, uh-huh. they're, both from, yeah they're both from the U.K. They, I couldn't remember where Josh was from. Yeah, he's from the he's from the UK also. Yeah, this was an article. Fury defends his WB belt against Wilder on October 9th. Hmm. That's coming up in. Oh October wow! It's not. Oh wow! Okay, I thought it was in November. Not that far away. Me too. Yeah. No, it's that's not. October 9th. Yeah, so that's coming up in the next couple weeks. Yeah. Okay. I'm not as excited about that one as I was the second one. No. I was really I I went I went out yeah. for the second one. I don't need I don't know if I'll even bother with the third one. 
Okay. Well, I mean, I might go to I, about you know, I I can say the same thing. I think I was more excited about the second fight. I mean, I don't have to see October 9th. I I'll be I'll be somewhere, so I won't be able to watch it. But anyway, so right. There you go. You're gonna be on vacation that week. Yes, I leave to go on vacation. Actually, that day I'll be leaving that day oh, okay. to go to Orlando, so I won't be uh, I won't be able to get out to a bar to watch uh, a fight. Well, that fight won't start till late, so maybe yeah. unless you got something planned on that, it's a possibility that I could go to a bar after with my brother-in-law or something and watch the fight with him. Yeah, just go to Buffalo Wild Wings late. That yeah. might be what I do. Go to Buffalo Wild Wings at like ten thirty or eleven. And the fly out the beers and watch the fight. Right. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the only boxing news I have. That was just that when I wanted to bring that up, I saw that. Well, that I did hear about the uh, fight with uh, Holyfield, and he lost in record time. What? I, I told you so, guys. But I told you so. I don't know what you're referring to. As an uh, Holyfield, orbit, oh. Holyfield had a fight on Saturday against another U against uh, a UFC. I think it was an MMA uh, fighter, and Holyfield went down like a rock in just under two minutes. As in, uh, I'm not, I can't, that Holyfield? Vander Holyfield, yep. The Vander Holyfield. That, yep. that Holyfield? Yep. He's been washed up for 20 years. Yeah, but he gave it another shot to see if he was going to do he's it. Gotta, he's got to be in his late, he's got to be in his late 50s now. 58. Holy Jesus. I told you this wouldn't work. Yeah, no, I, I had not, I hadn't heard anything about it. No, I, I, I didn't see the fight, but I was covering it. I was, when I was uh, taking notes in between shows. I'm like, hm, what a shock! Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, I wouldn't. That he does not belong in the ring. The fight, no, like, no, not in a serious capacity. No, you know, I could understand if you were doing some kind of training or something, some non-sanctioned sparring. Yeah, but to get in the actual have an actual boxing match at fifty eight. Yeah, and the other guy isn't that. Nah, that's crazy. Twenty four. So uh, it was like you know yeah. he was over the hill too. Where'd they fight Denny's? And they all get the the uh, early bird special. Get out of there by five o'clock. It was Wendy's actually, but who was counting? Was it Wendy's? Uh, yeah. I hop. I hop. Mm. Oh my and they get out of there at five o'clock, and you get the early bird special. Yeah, the but fight at three. So the. They can fight at three, like, and have dinner at four, and go to bed early. Right, but I knew this was a joke, and I knew they didn't stand a chance. Yeah, it. no, it's silly. That's, That's silly. why I wanted to bring it up to show you how stupid some of these things really are. Um, you know, money talks, as ACDC once walks. said. Yes, yes, it does. So it's an ACDC. Yes, sir. Money talks. BS walks. BS walks. I'm not doing the whole song. No, I don't know the whole song. I know that part, though. Well, Holyfield lives in, in, in Florida. He lives in South Florida near Riddick. Oh, okay. They yes. both live near each other. Oh, wow. Yeah. Didn't he pass away a couple years ago, Bo? I don't think. I think Riddick Bo's still alive. No, he's I don't alive. remember. Yeah, I think he's still alive. I think they're both. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah. He was king of the world for all of, like, five minutes. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Ten. Uh. You give him more credit than I do. Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember you know coming up in the in the you know mid two thousands and getting into boxing and, and you know learning about Riddick Bowe and and yeah. you know he was he was hot until he wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some flames just burn out faster than others. Yeah. Yeah. Holyfield was another one of those kind of guys that. No, no, he was when, when, quite a while. Yeah, but when he when it went away, it was gone. Well, he may not have been as dramatic as Riddick Bo, but no. but when oops, wrong Steve. Uh, when Bo when it went away for when it went away for Holyfield, it was gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as the older you get, the less stamina you have. Particularly yeah, a boxer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're fighting young guys like 44. <laughs> oh yeah, that's young. For uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. When when you when you're when you're when you're you've got 14 years on your opponent and he's 44, you might want to rethink your life choices at that point. Yes. 
or who said he was thinking. Mm. Yeah, right? You were thinking you wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. Uh, All right. I hadn't even heard anything about that. (laughs) I saw that's the last thing I had on that. Uh Yeah. So, where do you guys guys want to go next? You want to go to U.S. soccer, UFC, MLS, WWE? Let's go. Let's stick in the fighting. Let's stick with fighting. Let's go to UFC. All right. UFC. All right. We'll finish finish off the uh, martial sports and we'll move on to something else. All right. UFC. All right, so the, I have two articles, guys. The first one I have is uh, George St. Pierre explains his 2013 retirement due to mental health and drug testing, corrupt mm. drug testing within the U.S. Interesting. Um, this is from MMAJunkie.USA. It's from USA Today, but okay, uh, he explained why he retired again. One of the most dominant, <clears throat> excuse me, dominant fighters of his. Generation. Uh, the generation. I think we were all kind of shocked when he stepped down. Yeah. He seemed like he can't he retired young. Yeah. Like how young? I want to see was early thirties, thirty two? I was gonna say yeah, okay, that's borderline. Yeah, but he was still white hot at the time. Right. 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 You know, he wasn't he wasn't a he wasn't an old thirty two for especially for the martial sports. Uh. Um you know, when he called it quits, he was still at the top of his game. Well, you know, that's not unusual either. I mean, some people like to finish out on top. Yeah. You figure, you know, it seemed like well, he had so not, much more. Not at all. What have I got left to prove? I might as well just quit while I'm ahead. Yeah. I get it. But it still seemed like he had so much left to give, though. Mm-hmm. Give or take. Yeah, he retired. I do either way. Two record in MMA. He was 20-2 and two in U- at UFC. Um... He came back in 2017 uh, and beat Michael Bisping for the middleweight title at UFC 217. Yep. But then he walked away permanently after the fight. Um, yeah. So he, GSP was one of my favorites back in the day. He said that yeah. he, on top of the mental and emotional struggle I had in shitty training camp, I was tired mm. like mentally burned out, so I was training for a fight and trying to make it in – a way that because in the interview I was telling Johnny Hendricks, okay, let's do drug testing before the fight. He agreed in the beginning of the beginning, but later said no. He didn't want to do it. So something about drugs and something like that, you know. Yeah. Uh, but again, he he's got to be what in the top five of you at all time UFC fighters. You'd have to put him. Yeah, got to be, got to be. Uh, yeah, I would. I'd put him right up there. I, you know, I think there's a case that can be made for Silva being one, Anderson Silva. It's um, funny they, that you bring that up, but because the other article I had, it says Dana White claims that he is the goat. Silva's the goat. That's what. Yeah, yeah. I, I would. I would have to. I would have to agree. I have Silva at one. Uh, I think for his impact on the sport. Um, and, and bringing it into the into the number in, in, into the mainstream and just putting it you know even that much more on the map than it already was. You, Conor McGregor at two, um, maybe not. At, he you know he may not have been one of the most all time dominant fighters, but what he meant mm-hmm. to the sport was so much. He's kind of like the the Wayne Gretzky or the Michael Jordan of wow. MMA in terms of what they did for the sport. Not okay. not what he accomplished in the sport, but what he did for it. From okay. a, to, I'll give you that because it's hard to compare, you know, because there's only right. one Gretzky and one Michael Jordan, you know. Right, right, but I'm I'm saying, you know, the cultural impact that Jordan and and okay. um, Gretzky had on their respective sports, I would say, is very similar to the to, to the um impact that McGregor had. Okay, I'll um, give you that. Then at three. At three, if we're gonna if we're gonna you know go mix genders, I think it's only fair to do that and put Ronda Rousey at three mm-hmm. in that kind of that same vein as Conor McGregor, where she put female MMA on the map. I like she gave see people somebody. Ronda Rousey. You, uh, that's fair. And um, Ronda Rousey would beat it. Would would kick would kick his ass. <laughs> I don't know about that. I bet he. I bet uh, she would. 
I, I, and I pay to see it. I, I, that would be an interesting fight. Um, but but looking at it from it, you know, the perspective of the fact that she lost to Holly Holmes, and then mm-hmm. she lost again to um, – I'm not going to be able to come up with her name now. Yeah, I, know. I can see her face, but I'm not going to be able um, – I don't even remember her name. You know the right. fact that she already she lost to at the oh, height yeah. of at the mm-hmm. height of her popularity yeah. going into the Holmes fight. I would have said she could have probably beat Conor McGregor. And after the Holmes fight, I, no way. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that you know after she was she was just mentally wrecked after the Holmes fight. Yeah. At four, uh, there's a lot of guys that you could put at four. You could go big speed. You could go. Um, oh, I'm I'm not gonna be able to. Um, I can see his right. face. Right. Um. The 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 dude, the big black dude, whose name is escaping me now. Jones. Uh, not 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 John Bones Jones. The uh, the um the other one. He does commentary now. Oh, you're talking about um. It starts with a C, and I. Jesus. Corm- Cormier. Mm-hmm. Cormier. Cormier. Cormier, right. Yeah, right. Daniel Cormier. Yep. Daniel Cormier. I, I think I think I would put him at solidly at four. I, that's who I would put at four. And then I'm gonna go old school. And I'm gonna put at number five, um Oh god, is you part of UFC one? Um Liddell? not not Liddell, the other one. Um that's I can, uh, Yeah. Chuck's in my top ten, probably Gosh, six. Gosh. Um, but there's one guy he kind of started the whole thing, and I cannot remember. Uh, uh, oh, that's the wrong name. That's the serial killer, not John Wayne Gacy. Um, Ted Bundy. <laughs> no, 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 they're still, no, that's still a serial killer. That's um, a serial killer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, he picked in high school. The um, serial killer, uh, the serial killer of UFC. <laughs> what, what's mm. that up there? <laughs> yeah, I can see um oh um this Gracie school. Gracie. Oh. Gracie is what's his first name? Hmm. Oh, I can't remember his name, but the Gracies. Right, right. I get it. Oh, it's it's gonna drive me crazy. Just gotta look we'll it up. We'll come back to it. Yeah, yeah. No point in straining yourself over it. <sighs> Gracie, me it was George. Say goodnight, Gracie. Royce Gracie. Uh, yeah. Say goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> Gracie. <laughs> yeah, the, the Gracie I family. Uh, I, I think it would be, I think that the Gracie family would have to be in your, at least in the top 10. Yes. Um, uh, you know, what they, they, the, they put, they, they, uh, um, they really started it. Um, right. Yeah, Royce Gracie was the was who I was trying to come up with. Uh, they were all part of the Gracie family. Was all part of UFC one. They were all the they they were influential in um, getting mixed martial arts off the ground, as it were. I really thought you were going to take Liddell for some reason. Uh, I, really I would did. put Chuck Liddell at six. Um, he's, a, he's one of the best. One, yeah. But not one of the first names that comes to my mind when I think UFC. Okay. Oh. Uh, not, not that he's a bad fighter. No, great he's fighter. Not. Just not. No, I wouldn't want to. Not a guy I want to see in a dark alley. Or no, a lit no. alley. Or any kind of alley. I fear for my life myself. Man. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Mike, hey, no thank you. I'll kick, see you. I'll kick my own ass. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be I'd be safer, I think. Uh, hey, you're Chuck Liddell, right? Uh, see you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, shit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> or help. <laughs> right. <laughs> or, 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 or you just go, okay, I have 911 on speed dial. Just hit me and I'm, and I'm out. Just, yeah. I'm going down. Home. He hit me. That's it. Here's, oh, I'm I'm oh, right. Here's my keys. Yeah, here's mine. Take it. Here's my wallet, my cards, whatever you want, sir. It's all yours. Have at it. My underwear. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm not wearing any right now, but I can get some if that's what you really want. Anything you want, it's yours. 
Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and and I and that's no disrespect to uh, no to uh, Chuck Liddell or um, Robbie Lawler or any of the other other uh, guys that you could think of. Yeah, who would be who would be considered top five, top ten UFC uh, <laughs> fighters of all time? They're just. You know, it, it, you know, in a sport that's been around for the better part of thirty years now, you know, it's so hard. You know, when and you have so many names, it, it, it becomes harder and harder to, to determine who the greatest of all time is. Well, yeah, we we got a new crop coming up, but I don't think that yeah. the new crop can, can compare with because there's you know it, you know these names like Nate Diaz and Nick Diaz and um, excuse me, right? Some of the up and comers that like um. Uh, TJ Dillashaw, if you can get back to where he was before he got suspended a couple years ago, he's, he's back. He got what unsuspended. He for that? Drugs. Of course. Yeah. Pretty sure it was 2018 that he got suspended. For drugs. All the time. Right. And then there's names outside of the ring, like guys that never never fought, like uh, hmm. Dana White and Joe Rogan, who yeah, yeah. mainstream mainstreamed and streamlined UFC and took it from being a blood sport into an actual yeah. um, legitimate, honest-to-God sport where there were points and there was... because In UFC 1, there was very few rules. No eye pokes, right. no biting, and and no groin shots. I think they were pretty much the... Oh, they hurt. The, anyway. they hurt. Um, basic, you know, it was very simple, simple rules and it was... Um, Last man nothing, standing. Have, there's nothing worse than a guy getting hit in the groin. There's nothing worse than right? that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And there was, well, there was, was no clock, and you went until one guy couldn't get up, couldn't answer the bell. Yeah. And and Joe Rogan, Dana White, and that, and, and White's group came in and revolutionized mixed martial arts and, and trained and created a sport where yes. there were points and, and officials and you know, you look at the, the great officials that, that have influenced and created. You know, it's funny. Yeah. You know, basketball and, and boxing and football and, and, hockey. and uh, hockey, they've been around forever, yeah. in, in, you know, in relative terms. I, I, I'm, I was saying in terms of brutality because, you know, when you get oh. hit, you can get, you know. Oof. Yeah. I was thinking in terms of watching a sport develop and follow oh, okay. our very eyes. Okay, I was thinking brutality. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you think about the brutality in the NHL and how that was pacified in this in the eighties. Yeah. And, and by the time I sixties. Well, I, you know, I was thinking, you know, as the sixties and sixties became the seventies, and the seventies became the eighties. Yeah. You know, you didn't have those massive team brawls and and line brawls. You know, they they became fewer and fewer. Yeah. There was some fighting. You know, yeah, of course there was fighting, but the, the massive line brawls. Oh, well, yeah. Got fewer and fewer as we got into the 80s and 90s and into the 2000s, you know. That kind of went away with the with the uh, the last lock or the, the first lockout of the 21st century mm. as they tried mm. to change the game and, and make it more um, about finesse and play, playing hockey and not just about being a big dude well, on skates. How about combining you see with hockey? I mean, after you get after you draw, you know, a penalty, then they're just slamming the ground like body slamming, and then it turns into a whole new meaning. <laughs> yeah, hockey MMA style. Oh yeah, it's, right. Yeah. But I, w- I was thinking, you know, the rules of hockey, the rules of football, the rules of um, right. boxing, horses and golf. They've been around for hundreds of years. And they've been codified for just as long. With MMA, you know, we watch that sport develop in front of our very eyes. You know. You guys were young, and I wasn't even born when when MMA was getting hey, getting me. going. I'm only fifteen. And MMA before. has grown up with me, yeah. and, and I've grown up around. You know, get you know games like soccer or even games you know games, right. uh, like chess or or backgammon, checkers. Those rules have been codified for for as long as forever. Yes, since the and people are. have been playing those games. Yeah. And and with UFC and, and the, yeah. my, that was my point. My point being that UFC became a became a, an actual legitimate sport in my lifetime. Yes, it wasn't something like like 
basketball or football or baseball, you know, any of the other predominant North American sports or even soccer, you know, which has a, a long and storied tradition in South America and Europe and, and in, in the Asian markets. <laughs> uh, you know, we grew up, we grew up with, we, we watched the evolution of MMA from a blood sport where it was no yeah. holes barred and it was last man standing into the respected form that it has become to this day. Right. And I think that's, I think that's fascinating where, where football and baseball and basketball and there have been rule changes and rule tweaks, but there hasn't been any right. significant kid changes to the way the game is played. No. Even though, pe- even though people complain about football, and we can get into that later on in the show if you want mm-hmm. But people complain about the pacification of football. Yes. The, 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 the basic element of the game is the same. Right. So. <laughs> I where see my guys, time. Where do you guys want to go next? I have uh, I have U.S. soccer. I have MLS. Go I, to U.S. soccer. U.S. soccer. U.S. soccer. Yeah. We can do U.S. soccer, then we can do MLS, and we can have All our right. soccer talk. Um, the USA, I guess there was a uh, from Yahoo Sports that there is an um, U.S. soccer offers identical contract to the yes. U.S. MT and the U.S. WNT, so they yep. got ideal About contract. Um, well, they did it. And they well, offered it to them yeah. years ago, and the girls turned it down. Mm-hmm. They wanted that guaranteed money. And that's why that's when they took them. That's when the women's soccer took them to court, and the court said, "You sign the contract, deal with it." And when you get to renegotiate, negotiate a better contract. Yeah, I mean, well, I was glad and, to see they're on the same page finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if that's the contract, now they don't get to complain about it this time. No. Again, you sign the contract. It's a contract. They they uh-huh. signed a contract. Everybody signed a contract. Everybody agreed to the terms. You don't like the terms. Oh well. Yeah, I, think, I think there's been people that have come out and said that the uh, the women's this is just a this is just something that uh, U.S. soccer is trying to do to yes uh, yeah you know apologize to them all these years of not giving them equal pay and all this stuff. Um, I did see something about that. Some of the USWNIT or N- USWNT mm-hmm. like super fanatics think it's a slap in the face of US soccer to finally do this. What took them so long? Well, yeah, I was going to say that too. Contract. Yeah. They signed a damn contract. Right. And they agree to the terms of the contract. You abide by the terms. Of, if you want to break the contract, then you have to ab- abide by the rules of breaking the contract. If you can't break the contract, then you have to ride the contract out until you can negotiate a better contract. That's the just that's just the that's there is no arguing, no negotiating. You no. sign the contract. You have to you have to live by the terms of the contract. You sign a bad contract, that's on you. That's right. right. Although some do try to get out of it because you know how some you know while well, players in other sports you know. They well get a buyout. You know, like, say the contract is for uh, five or six years, but they want to yeah, you know, buy out in like two or three after three like, years. Yeah, like yeah, I'm not happy with this. I want to get, but I want to get the hell out of here. Like you know, yeah. Like, if you sign a contract, you should honor it. Okay, I mean yeah, I, that's, the way, that's the way it always used to be. And, 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 and they tied the hands. They they tied the hands of the U.S. of the U.S. soccer organization right. and backed them into a corner and made them look like assholes because they wouldn't. Pay them equally, but then they but they wouldn't say that it, it doesn't matter because if U.S. soccer U.S. soccer has no choice but to you sign the contract. This is the contract you sign. Yeah, but I do think they are. They're, they're in a no win. Yeah, but they signed a contract. Hmm. They, they 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 they're they're entitled to whatever the contract they sign agrees to pay them. It, and that's the thing is that they, they they renegotiated a new contract and a better contract, a more equal contract, 
but they were offered the exact same contract as the U.S. men's team, and they turned it down. They wanted the guaranteed money for playing in the games. I they guess. didn't want they, they didn't want to take the risk of not getting paid if they didn't perform well. And when they performed so well that they ended up winning everything and had won everything, they thought they they acted like they were being treated unfairly. Were they being treated unfairly? No, because no. they signed the contract. They were offered both the men's team and the women's team were offered the exact same contract. The men's team decided to take the less guaranteed money, but bigger bonuses if they played well. The women's team took more guaranteed money, but fewer incentives if they played well. Yes. They were they were offered the exact same contract. And they chose different paths, and that's just do they did they well, deserve to, they deserve the right to negotiate like any other union. They deserve the right to negotiate their own contracts and their own pay. And yeah. then they have to abide by the terms of the contract. Hmm. This is not it's yeah. not a right left a, a men versus women issue. This is no, a business decision. Be. Be. This is a business decision. You made a bad business decision, you gotta live with it. Yeah. That dims the brakes. Yeah, sometimes what causes leagues to go under. You know, you sign a bad deal and uh, Yeah. And, 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 and the unfortunate thing is is that the contract was like a five or six year deal. So they went when they got good and they were dominating everything, they were neither side was in an an advantageous position. US soccer US soccer the organization looks like a bunch of assholes because they didn't pay they're not paying the the women's side the same right. amount as the men's side and and the women's side gets to play the victim because they're not being paid the same as the men right. it, it's a no win situation for US soccer yeah. and if US soccer starts paying the women the same as the men it violates the contract and that's just it's contract right. law Hire better lawyers and negotiate better contracts, children. Right. No hire a shyster. Right. Many lawyers out there are shysters. So. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Many yeah. But I am not a lawyer, and this is not legal advice. That's right. I don't even play one on TV either. Oh. I don't eat. No, I don't. I don't play one on YouTube. <laughs> but if you have an opening, well, call me. Yeah, yeah. Let us know. Call 100 shyster. Oh. Okay. The last is do we cheat him and how? Hmm. Okay. That's an old joke. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yes. The MLS, the MLS is, of course, winding down. Um, yeah. Or um, Get about. Anything, anything, Lewis, that stands out to you um, as far as playoffs or anything like that right well, now? Well, my Red Bulls are long gone, so it's not really going to matter. They got the other team that shall be nameless. And that's <laughs> doing well. <laughs> Excuse me. Would that be the revolution? No, no, no. Don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> you have to go further no north, Adam. Power ranking since the season started. There's another team know. in a certain area that's doing a lot better that I wish that would that I wish they were going the opposite direction. <laughs> people who are in that area, the same area as me, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Let's see who that might be. Who he's? Who's he referring to? You'll find out. The <laughs> other New York club. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look, look at the, look like it's revealed. I'm gonna look at the power rankings because they should be ahead of the Red Bulls, if that's the case. <laughs> yep. All right. So number one is the Revolution. The Sounders yes. are number two. Mm. Colorado's three. Nashville's four. Sporting mm. Kansas City's five. Atlanta's six. Orlando City. Closest to me is seven. Mm -hmm. Respectable. Philadelphia is eight. The New York City FC is nine. That's got to be the team he's referring to. Yes. <laughs> mm. And then the top. Yeah. Of the LA, the it was, that, it was either the Revolution top. or that other this. team. From okay. Look, look at this. Look at this. Here's the team that I was covering on my other show, Inner Miami. They were on the dead end of the stick. They're yeah. number 11 in the power rankings. Wow. So they moved up in the power rankings in the MLS. 
They yeah, I see that. Come games. on, Trump. Nice. They must be winning some games because I didn't think. I thought there was Sounds like it, yeah. Done. Yeah, I they guess. were on the, on the other side of the. Uh, yep. Totem yeah, pole. they're on the short end of the stick at one point, like the super the lonely, short end. The lonely man of the totem pole. Yeah. yeah. Um. So how much how much soccer is left? About two weeks. And how does how does the uh, how does the MLS playoffs work? Um. Well, it's changed every year. I mean, I think it's like uh, one through through four, and they go by uh, goal alignment. Um, if they have to go into a third game. So okay. Two game series. The rules, best the rules, out of three. Um, no, it's supposed to be uh, the best uh, of, of two goals becomes the win. If it comes to that, may have to go to a third game, and that's where um, we'll determine the winner. Mm. Man, that's where the that's where the uh, shootouts will come in because that will also determine that as well. During the first okay. game, during the first two games, you don't need that, but if it goes to a third game, that will have that will be necessary. If it's a squirrel with uh, regulation, mm. I can't believe I've been following this since it started. You think you've been following stuff since you first started, Ab. I started following MLS since day one. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. 25 I didn't years think ago. About, I, yeah, I didn't think about I didn't think about you, uh, the, the MLS being such a young league, because uh, I don't really follow soccer. Right. And, um, you know, I think of, of the sports that I've, but, but I was thinking more. But U.S. soccer didn't do anything new or innovative with soccer. They just played soccer, right? You know, and I was thinking about the uh, uh, the UFC being its wholly own thing and doing something new and innovative and creating yeah. a brand. That's where that's where that that's what that's where my mind was. Right, stoking the fire and grabbing another beer. Well, after <sighs> the uh, you know after the uh, dismiss of uh, the NASL in uh, 1984. You know, we didn't right. have a professional soccer league in the country for over a decade. And, you know, this yeah. kind of came about. And, like, uh, like 96? 96, yes. Just before the WNBA. So I'm like, yeah. okay, we got to sell the soccer league again. I think I might want to get yeah. it. And New York has a team. Although they weren't. Called, well, this was back then. Back then, we only had one. But they weren't called the Red Bulls then, though. What was what were they? Because Red Bull is a sponsorship, they right? The, they were called the Metro Stars back then. Now, is Red Bulls like the energy drink? Just the, like I, I know they own F. I don't think they relate. Okay, because I know they own F one teams. They have an F one team, yes. and I think they have some European soccer clubs that they're associated with. Right. Um. And so I've always wondered if they were if that was the same if they were the same people no, as the, as the Red I don't Bulls. Think they're related. Okay. Lewis, when when the league started, was the was the Tampa Bay Mutiny part of it, or did they come in later on? They came in later, and they pulled up and died. They did die. Yes, I know. Oh yeah. Sure. I mean, even though yeah, started Carlos Valderrama on the team, it didn't help him. They still well, fought. Well, originally they were originally they were the Rowdies. Yes. And then they went to the Mutiny, and now they're back to the Rowdies again, trying to get back in the MLS. And it was Mutiny. To get the Rowdies in. So we'll see. And it was Mutiny now, anyway. Yeah. Detroit's never had an MLS team, have they? The what? Detroit? Um, You know, I think they did, but they quickly faded as well. Yeah. Might have one or two years. I think about a week and a half. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's probably why I never really got into soccer, because I didn't have a team. Right. You know, it, 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 it's the hard to... The team does better. It's hard to get into a sport that you don't really care about in the first place right. and you don't have a rooting interest in a, in a, in, in your major well, sporting. I got, I got rooted into it early because we had the Cosmos back in the seventies and that was mm. like one of the first games I saw. And of course you had the star of the major, of the major soccer league, probably second best in all sports as well. And that was Pele. So, mm. And that was back in the mid seventies. Mm. I was young myself, and I think it was strong oh, yeah. ever since then. I yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. I liked in the mid. I, I watched a little bit of of like the um, the World Cup in the mid two thousands when. Um, yeah. I want to say Dempsey was that his name. Dempsey, the, Ameri the American soccer player. His name is War Number Ten. 
Yeah, right. Um, you said you said are you talking about Landon Donovan? Donovan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Donovan. Donovan. Yeah, yeah. I like watching him play. Yeah. Because he was an American, you know, and, and you know, being being an unabashed nationalist, you know, having having an American star was fun. Yeah. Of course, there's a commercial with him in it, and they refer to him as Don Oban. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, come on. Don Oban. Don Oban, stupid. Yeah, All right. right. Get out of here. Can we not and say we didn't? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I never really could get into soccer. So, I, I do like, I, I will say that, and I've said this before, and I'll, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. Soccer in person is incredibly fun. Yes. Going to a soccer game, I went to a handful of soccer games in college, and it was so much fun. Right. And it was, I like I liked rugby. Uh, and I was at a rugby match, and that was boring. Okay. So I kind of migrated over to the soccer field. And I had gone to the first soccer game, and that was really, really cool. And then my buddy was on the, was, was a re- big rugby fan. And he said, oh, come down and watch the rugby game. And I was like, I, I was there for like an hour and a half. Like, this is boring. All we're doing is scrumming. So, yeah. I, so I wandered over to the soccer field, and they were playing inside. That was so much fun to watch. It was. I, 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 I would... I would go to a soccer game. Well, there's only one thing, guys. Uh, I would go to – I haven't been to a soccer game either. We have the Rowdies here trying to get to a game before the end of the year. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be – But it looks like the NHL um, is at 98%. Back I saw that. It's awesome. It yeah, it should be by the time the uh, opening day is, which is yeah. a lot of time when you think about it, but that's the that's – A couple the more weeks. October twelfth is the opener. Yeah. Right. We're getting ready to kick off um preseason. Yeah. Yep. Next week. Yep. Next week. Please. Yeah. Preseason starts uh, next Saturday. Next Saturday. Okay. Thank God. I cannot believe that we're already going to be talking about hockey again. It's like it just ended, and now we're going to be right? talking about it again. It's going to be me. Not. At least they're starting on time this year. True. I am not sad about that. <laughs> no, yeah. me either. Me either. At least everything's back to normal. Basketball's going to start on time. Yep. Hockey's going to start on time. The NFL started on time. College. The dodgeball starts on time, though. Mm, i got to check that. Yeah, check out the Ocho to find out whether it's going to be on time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cor- Cornhole, too. Right. Yeah. That's Cornhole. on Cornhole, ne- that's on Cornhole never stopped. Cornhole, yeah, Cornhole and, and, and bowling never stopped. Yeah, that's yep. true. True. Okay. Yeah. But uh, they said uh, the U.S. Right? Army has a Cornhole team. Right, but well, they did say October twelfth, um, and they said ninety eight percent, and that was from the deputy commissioner's um, words. Office, not the, uh, not uh, you know who, Butthead. which I'm not going to say his Gary name. He, should, he just says his name. You can say Gary Batman. I'm not afraid. We're not going to get fined or anything. Yeah, but you know, I can't, you stand him. Yeah, but I can't stand. Yeah, but I can't stand him either. He couldn't. I can't stand him as far as I'm kicking. Like, I can't kick him very far. Right. <laughs> um, um, the NBA obviously is not going to require vaccination. Yes, I heard. for players. For their players. Um, right. But I yeah. want to bring up. I guess Chris Bosh returned Pat Riley's championship ring during his Hall of Fame speech. Did you guys see that? Huh? You did not yeah. see. No. Yeah. Supposedly he re- he says Chris Bosh returns Pat Riley's championship ring. During Hall of Fame speech, I don't know if he had the ring or what happened or what. Well, I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what he turned his ring. So. Very odd. I always like Chris Bosh. I know Chris Bosh yeah. did mention something about um, when he was in the Olympics. You know, he, he he was a rookie or one of the rookies on the Olympic team. So yeah, said, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get up early. And I'm going to get out there and I'm going to, I have to prove myself. He goes, so I get up, we get to the hotel. I get up early. I set my alarm and I get up and I get to the gym and there's Kobe Bryant already there. He's already on the, on the table. Yeah. He's already been up. Right. He said, this is a guy that put in dedication in his craft. He said, this is a guy also too. That yeah. Just came off losing the Mamba NBA mentality. Mamba mentality. Right. He came off losing an NBA title and came into the Olympics and he's already up before everyone else is to get ready to go for the Olympics. Ready to whoop ass. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, Kobe had one speed, and that was hard. Yep. Kobe went hard huh. all the time. Kobe yep. didn't know quick. No. Nope. And the, and the world is a worse place without him. Yep. Exactly. Sure is. Well, I mean, look at look at what happened since he's passed away. It went to hell in a handbasket since. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Back again. Oh, um, to hell in a handbasket really fast since since he's passed away. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was hard. Cause I didn't really have that relationship with Kobe. Kobe was never one of my favorite players from growing up. Right. But the just the emotions that I felt that day, I I bawled like a baby. Me too. I, I bawled. Me too. I, I I I you know Von Allen did a special, and I was gonna go on. I just couldn't go on. I was crying so hard, and like I didn't have that. Kobe wasn't one of my favorite players. Wasn't one of my you know I like Kobe, but you you know. I was a Pistons fan in the early 2000s. I was a Pistons fan in the early 2000s. So, you know, by nature, I just, you know, I hated everybody who wasn't in Detroit, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, it, it just, it struck me how how rough that was. I, I still, you know, like I said, I wasn't a Kobe fan. I mean, I didn't dislike him and respect right. the hell out of him because he was great. But he wasn't like one of my guys. Yeah. And it just it struck me how emotional I got that you know after finding out he was gone. When I first heard the report, I didn't believe it because they said it came from TMZ. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. and yeah, I'm like, yeah, I can't be trusted. That's TMZ, and TMZ is just a rag, right. just a rag bag, and right. they're, they're hardly even credible. But then I saw on the on CNN when I got home, I'm like, oh my god, it's real. Right. Awful. It, it was when they were reporting it. They were reporting a helicopter crash. The first yeah. report. Thing. So I got on the Google machine and did some sleuthing. Uh-huh. And I had found it. I found a helicopter crash reported in, I think it was Santa Monica that morning. And it was like, okay, well, this been a helicopter crash. But it's not saying anybody important was on that. Not that anybody else wouldn't, not that, that, that you know, yeah. not that it wouldn't be terrible if somebody else. You know, less famous had have died in a, in a helicopter crash, but it was just a it's just a helicopter crash, and they weren't reporting anything more than just a helicopter crash. Right, right. And then as more and more reports started coming in, it, and it confirmed that Kobe was on the plane or on the helicopter. Helicopter. And there was bad weather, and it, it just it struck me as so unfair. I think that was what the biggest thing for me was: is it was so unfair. Because he had that never quit attitude, that never say die attitude, that yeah. that he wasn't gonna let a little bit of fog stop him from doing what he had to do, and it was you know he, he died the way he lived, going hard. Yeah, you know, and it's on you know not to bring the show down before we get into anything else, but right, you know, we're missing. I I'm, I. I I think that Kobe should have been – it should have been Kobe and not LeBron in Space Jam 2. Space Jam 2 should have been Kobe's movie. Right. And, then three weeks and I'm an unabashed Co- – and I'm an unabashed, unapologetic Co- uh, LeBron hater. Can't stand right. the guy. Yeah. And and I, I think that I think that, that was – because he had, he had already had some projects in the work and he was – in the works, and you know, his daughter was an up and coming star, and yes, it's just so damn unfair. It is, and then a month later, I lost Eric, and then the whole world went to shit a month after that. Right, there's like a there's like a pattern for me, and not a very good one either. Well, I mean, also to remember, well, I was I was. Uh, the night that he got inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame, I was going bowling, galactic bowling, with a group of friends. I new friends that I had just recently met, and I I was watching at Applebee's, and again I couldn't hear it, but from a distance you could see a TV, and I saw you know his 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 wife Vanessa, and it took every ounce of energy not to ball my eyes out to see her 
and then see Mike, you know, see Michael Jordan talk. And then I, I watched, you know, a lot of things. I watched the, you know, what they did, the celebration they did for him in LA and how everybody talked. You, it's, it's, it's hard to hold back tears then listening yeah. to all these guys talk about him. And really yeah. the guy that, that it seemed to take yeah. it the hardest was Shaq. He yeah. seemed to be the one out of anybody that took the news the yeah. hardest that Kobe had passed away, even though I know yeah. him and Kobe weren't on great, great terms as far as they were friends. but They, they had made up. They had just yeah. gone through the process of getting back to being yeah. good friends. Yeah. You know, and, they, they, had, they had that falling out in the mid-2000s when, Co- when Shaq left. LA for like finally left LA and he, he went to Miami. They didn't talk for years. But Kobe, and, Kobe uh, had called Shaq's son the day before he died. Right. The day before yeah. he died, he had called Shaq. And son. they were they were they were getting back to being on good terms. terms. They were working their differences out and they were you know they were friends again right. and they buried the hatchet and they were moving on, you know. Right. And then Tragic. it all fell apart. Well, I just thought I'd bring Shall we move on to something more, you know, less morose? Yeah, yeah. actually, I am going to move on to the only golf event that drives me to throwing things at the television. And it's coming up next week. It starts next week. Ah. Oh, yeah. Just hey, what's he? I'm going to bring it up right here. <laughs> this oh, is the event well, this that fun. I'm referring to. I'm going to bring it up right now. Hang on. Yeah, there we go. This Hang on. Fun. I got to get the background up here. This is the only event that pisses me off more than any other golf event all year long. It's this one right here. Ryder Cup. Ryder Cup. It's Ryder Cup. And let me say something that you don't want to be in the same room with me because I will chuck things at the TV. Not anything that will break the TV, but I will right. chuck things at the TV. Yes. When I turn the coverage on and you see all these European flags on the leaderboard and no American flags, it yeah. pisses you off that – the United States, you know, is not doing very well. But no. let me give you guys who the Ryder Cup teams are for both Team USA and Team Europe. And you can tell me who you think. You guys don't know much about it, but let me see. You can let me give you your opinion on who you think is going to win uh, the Ryder Cup in a couple of weeks. Now, it's in Whistling Straits, so it's on U.S. soil, yes. which gives some of the that? United States. Whistling Straits is in uh, 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 Avon, Wisconsin. It's in Wisconsin. Oh, okay, cool. The land of the yeah. sea. Should be nice. Should be a night, nice weather for it. So won't be hot team, though. No. Here's Team USA. Their captain is Steve Stricker. Mm-hmm. Vice captains are Mickelson and Fred Couples. Mm-hmm. And then here, oh, wow. are, here is Team USA. You have Colin Morikama, Dustin Johnson, Brighton DeChambeau. Brooks Kepka, Justin Thomas, oh. Patrick Kinway. Those are all qualifiers. And here are the picks. The captain's picks are as follows. Patrick Canelay, Daniel Berger, Harris English, Tony Finau, Xander Shoffley, Scotty Schaffer, and Jordan Spieth. Those are the picks. It's a good team. Here good team. in Team Europe. Team Europe is captained by Padraig Harrington. They don't have a vice captain, but here's their, their, oh. their guys. Paul Casey, Matt Fitzpatrick, Terrell Hatton, Tommy Fleetwood, Roy McIlroy, Victor Hovland, John Rahm, Lee Leswood, and Brendan Weisberger are the automatic qualifiers. Here are the picks. Sergio Garcia, Shane Lauer, and oh. Holter are uh. all in as Team Europe. Um, how I look at this, this is how I look at this. This is probably pretty evenly matched amongst the players. Yeah, I would... Yeah. Um, but Europe seems to dominate this event. They they have. They they they, they, just, they uh, it, it it's a foregone conclusion. Um I'm hoping I think what is it? What's it Saturday? What's next Saturday or next Sunday? The twenty sixth? Yeah. I'm gonna try to watch I'm gonna try to watch I, I always sit and watch all twelve singles matches. Because mm-hmm. again, the format is they play one on one against each other. Yes. How the format is played, if you guys don't know at home, it is what they call match play. So what that means is it goes by how many holes you win, meaning mm-hmm. if I'm playing against Adam and I birdie the first okay. bars, I'm one up after the hole, and so on and so forth. That's how it goes until it's qualified. So you get to either 
there's not enough holes left and I win five and four, which means I was five up with four holes to play or something along those lines. That is how it Okay. Started. Yeah. Every match that I is one, every match that is one is a half a point. Or I'm sorry, a full point. Excuse me. Full full point. Point. If you have the match, it's a half a point for your team. That's how it, it okay. breaks. So, so there are no t- there are ties, but it goes for yeah. half a point. Um, okay, so if we both won four holes out of not it, how do you tie? Oh yeah, because eighteen. You got okay, 18. so if we we play eighteen, so if we went each one nine, then you get a half point. Correct. Does Look, each yeah, team was, get a half point? Yes, each yes. team will get a half point. It goes okay. to what they call an all square match. So it'll yeah. be all square. No one wins. So it's a neutral. I've been called that too. Match. Okay. Now, okay, cool. with with well, the Ryder Cup, since Europe has the Ryder Cup, they only have to get 14 points to retain it. The United States has to get 14 and a half. Uh, the okay. Cup you call it fair? Come on. Well, that's the rules of, of the Ryder Cup. It's been that's that way for – Well, I'm so, just wondering so, how it's going to work, how it's gonna work with Kapka and uh, – Bryson DeChambeau. Bryson DeChambeau. Hey, Brooksy, how you doing? You put your shit. If he calls it Brooksy, you put your differences play. aside. You go kick the Europeans' asses, and we'll we'll see each other in the parking lot afterwards. Yeah. Well, that's that's oh, how it's gonna work. Yeah. Who's the captain's Mickelson? Well, who's the captain's Mickels? Steve Stricker, Couples, and Mickelson. I'm, I sit him down in a room. I'm like, all right, you two figure it the blank out. Mm-hmm. And then we're gonna go kick some European ass. And if y'all two got any issues, you can deal with it afterwards at Applebee's. Right. Well, that's how, how that's how we're that's, that. No, no, no. That's how this is gonna go down. We got one job. But I mean, you owe me that, twelve European scouts. So that, let's go. That's that's the that's the I don't, that's the, the big story at the yeah. Ryder Cup this week. Yeah, I can just hear it now between you know. Kevin and Deshaun, but if you call me Brooks Jones, I'm gonna take my five iron and gonna slam you in the ass. Well, here's here's the thing. Let's say, for example, on either Friday or Saturday, they're yeah. paired together. Uh-oh. They're paired together. They're Uh-oh. they're put together as a team because here's how it goes. The first day, I believe, is best ball. Yeah. So they both okay. hit and take the shot. Now there's an alternate shot. I would not put DeShambeau and Kepka together in an no, alternate shot. No. Because you're going to piss each other off. Four or three. Market. So here's the right. question I have. Would you rather see Team USA win the Ryder Cup or have a Kepka DeChambeau blow up at the Ryder Cup? Which which one would you rather see? I rather can I have win. both? Hey, can, I, uh, can I get both? <laughs> no. No. It's one, 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 it's one or the other. Uh, I, want, I want to win the Cup. Win yes. the Cup. Win the Cup. Yeah. Win the Cup. Yeah. Win the cup. I'm gonna because, beat. The, I want to beat the Europeans and rub their noses in it. Kepka yeah. Kepka's already come out and said that he's not really a huge fan of the Ryder Cup because he can play well, and then the other 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 guys on the team could screw it all up for everybody else. Yeah, so, I get that. I, I mean, get that. It's that's the unfortunate thing about golf is where golf is not necessarily a team sport. Yes, you're exactly. You know, right. it's like it's like you know a football game. Is you know that the other guys are you would assume that the other guys are are on your side and they're, you're all pulling for you know to one for one goal, but the Ryder Cup you know golf is an individual sport and so when it comes to playing a golf tournament, you're in it for yourself and right. and, and you know you want to look good you want to have a good you want to have a good round several rounds you want to have a good weekend because. You know, it's about positioning yourself for the next tournament, just as much as about winning that tournament. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't win that tournament, you still want to be in the top five, top ten, so that you can yeah. play yourself, continue to play, and, and appear in other tournaments. Well, and, and and so when it comes to turn, when it comes to a, a, a tournament like a yeah, tournament well, like this, yeah, <laughs> I just smelled about- <laughs> Well, this, I mean, the, I mean, the uh. Ryder Cup. You know, it's it's. I think what it basically is is it's bragging rights for whoever wins. Yes. Whatever side wins is going to have a year, yeah. rights until two years from now. You know, right. in twenty twenty. Right. Okay. Two years. Year. Next year it'll be the okay. President's Cup. 
And the President's Cup is Team USA versus the world outside of Europe. So everybody oh, so it's everybody Team USA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that would be the Canadians, the Mexicans, all of Asia. Australian, Japan, okay. China, mm -hmm. all of them are all included in the President's Cup. My Against house. the U.S.? Against the U.S. Wow. Okay. And, then. That, and the funny thing is the United States has a better record in that tournament than they do mm. in the Ryder Cup. That is odd. That's there weird. You, go. you you play but against the best players hang on a in second. Europe. I which... want to look this up real quick. Let's see what the record is for Team USA okay, yeah. in the Ryder Cup because I'm curious. Yeah. I guarantee you Europe has a huge <laughs> lead in the Ryder Cup. Huge lead. Let's Ugh. see. USA's I swallowed a bug, so I just want to put uh, that on the record. record. That's why I'm happy. In the Ryder Cup. Okay, here we go. Let's see. How many Ryder Cups? Okay. So, they – oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. <coughs> they had 42 <coughs> matches, and they're 26 and 14 in those – Really? Wow. Okay. And that's to 2018, which, again, it would be this year because they, they didn't have the last year due to COVID. Right. Um, now – if you guys do not know, the Ryder Cup used to be in the odd years. 9-11 okay. changed that. Yes. 9-11 was in 2001. It went to 2002. <laughs> they had changed it, and then it went back to the President's Cup being on the odd years. And now, since COVID has hit, it's gone back to Ryder Cup yes. being in the odd years and the President's Cup being in the even years. Okay. Uh, interesting. Now, what are we in the press? In the President's Cup, I'm not 100% sure what our record is in the President's Cup. Um, the first well, ask the first Ryder Cup was in 1921. Oh, okay. That was when the first Ryder Cup happened. Um, team <coughs> and let's see here. I'm trying to see here. Uh, notable Ryder Cups. 1999, the Battle of Brooklyn. I remember watching that one. That's where Justin Leonard made a huge putt on yeah. seven. And the last time the United States won the cup was in 2012. Okay, so that's that explains why it feels like we never win it. They haven't won it in eight battle, years. Wow. Yeah, the battle of Miracle at Merdina. Yeah, they mm. played 42, 42 matches, and they're 26, 14, and two in those 42 matches. Europe mm. has played in 20 matches, and they're 11, 8, and one in those matches. So <laughs> that's that. Now. Here's how it all started. In 1927 and 1977, it was Great Britain and Ireland. That was the only two that were able to play. They were 13 and 1 in 22 matches. When they changed to Europe, now they've won more. So Europe has – I didn't know that either. I didn't know that it was that much of a domination either. But the last time the United States won a Ryder Cup was, again, back in – we won in 2016 at – Hazeltine, I'm sorry. We won in 2016. Uh, Europe won last year in well, 2018, and then we came back. <laughs> we'll see how it all boils down uh, next week. Right. So that is that. Right. But, um, so that's how it, it, it boils down. I have a question then about the scoring. So can we win by more than 14 and a half? Yes, you could score more than yeah, 14 yeah. and a half points. Yes. yes. So if we won, so if we scored 20 and they scored 14, would we, would we win or would they win? We'd win. If we have, okay. If you if the United States needs 14 and a half in any capacity, we get 14 and a half. Even if they get 14, we win the cup. Yeah. Actually, okay. I, okay. I think if we got 20, they can't score 14. There's there okay. no right. To do that. So then. How does that work in 2023? Oh, you mean in the President's Cup? Is uh, that what you're referring to? Or are you referring to the right? No, no, no. The next time we play. Well, you mean oh, that'll be. Yeah, in I'm Europe. referring to the right. Okay, okay so, so, so if, if we win if, this year. If we win the Ryder Cup this right. year, then we only need 14. If we won. If, next, the next time we play, they need 14 and a half. Okay. To the cup back. So whoever loses the cup. Okay. Has okay. To have so, 14 and a half the next time we play. That's how it that's to how win I, it back. To win it back, correct. Okay, okay. Because I was, I was curious. So, so even if we scored 
if we won twenty to, to let's say eight or whatever, I, you know, we, then we win the cup. We'd have the cup. Points. And then and then the next time we played, we'd have to we'd have to we'd have to score fourteen. That's to it. maintain to retain it. Okay. To retain the cup. Okay. The team so if we, if it was needs fourteen to retain it. Yep. <clears throat> So that's how, and I think it's, I want to say it's the same way in the President's Cup, too. I think okay. the point system is exactly the same way as it is in the Ryder Cup. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, this is the only tournament that I get so emotionally involved in that I throw things yeah. at the um, More than the now, Masters? Wow. No, I don't get mad at the Masters because it's a great, I mean, that's my dream 18. So why'd I get oh, mad okay, at the okay. Right. Right. That's my dream 18 to go play at Augusta and Georgia. But I, yeah. I, I'm telling you right now, with with uh, Cap getting the Shambo, I, uh, this is going to be, you know, this is going to be hell on the golf course. Hey, Brooksy, I'm going to well, I'm, I'm telling again. you right now, if Stricker, Mickelson, and Couples put them together, that's a big ass mistake. Don't. Oh, yeah. Me. Tom and Jerry, uh, not, put them together. Don't. Not if you don't have to. Yep. Don't no. put them together. I if honestly, if you honestly, put them together, then it's a it's a bomb waiting to happen. You, oh yeah. yeah, that's the way it is. Yeah, well, and I'll be throwing stuff at the set myself. I, <laughs> if I, I would, if I was the captain, Yo, I'd gather everybody up, and you know we have a big. <clears throat> when's the tournament start? Thursday. Yeah, next uh, Thursday. Friday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Friday. Thursday. Next Friday. I'm sorry. It's next Friday. I apologize. Oh, sorry. So it's next Thursday. 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 Next. Next Thursday, everybody, everybody come into town, and get the, the team hotel, have a big dinner for everybody, and I sit everybody down, and they be like, "All right, boys, we got one goal, and we're gonna go win this tournament. I don't care what personal differences you have, you know, we're here to do a job. We got one job to do. Mm-hmm. Set everything aside for three days. On Monday, you can pick it all back up. I don't care." <clears throat> But for the next three days, uh, you ain't friends, you're colleagues. Do one thing straight. We're here to do a job. We got one job to do. We're going to go play the best three rounds of golf we've ever played. We're going to win the cup. That's it. That's all I got. Well, the, the, the thing is, you. I mean, that would be great. And I would believe everybody but those two would have an issue because they have big-ass ego. So that's the only issue. I, with I, but the speech would be great. Picture- I agree with you on that. I would take that, you know, at heart. But the, the, I, I, it's going to take just the like rest of, I, the, rest I, of those guys, the other ten on that team to go. Hey, Brooks. Hey, Bryson. Put your shit aside. We got to yeah. win the cup. Let's go win the damn cup. And you guys yep. can fight on Monday after we get out of here. Go fight on. Monday. Let, let, right we, now, we can fight over. We, we can fight over whatever. You're supposed to be on top of your game for us to win yep. the cup. Put it all aside, all that petty yep. bullshit. Put it aside for one weekend. I don't care if you pick it up right up. Pick it up. Leave it at the door. Pick it up on your way out. Check your ego at the door. There you go. Very good, Lewis. Absolutely. Check yep. your ego at the door. Because yep. I'm not going to put up with it. I'm not going. I'm not going to put it up with it for the next three days. I got you here. I and you. Y'all were invited. Y'all earned your spots. Now let's go prove the world wrong and go win this damn thing. Yes, and Seth Seth Curry is going but, to be a commentator, by the way, in case you're wondering. Really, I wasn't wondering, but I don't see that. I don't. I, don't know I like that. I think uh, he's a great. He's a scratch. Isn't he a scratch golfer? He's a player. Dude. Oh, okay, he's you're a right. Player you're right. on the golf course. He is a hell player. yeah. Yeah, you can player. absolutely play. Him, unlike <laughs> unlike other fellow basketball players who may have hit the right, last right. time or two. Well, Jordan can play. Jordan's a player. And Barkley. Yeah, uh, sorry. That bug's still in my throat. <laughs> that bug's still in my throat. Sorry about that. That's what you get for having a bug. All right, but, that's what um, I get for doing the show outside. <laughs> but Curry, yeah, Curry's going to be covering Curry can uh, part of that. Um, so, yeah, he's he's a player. Um, Kepka, actually, speaking of Brooks Kepka, he came out and said, I, 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 he said that he is going to surpass – uh, Tiger Woods in majors by the end of his career, he will pass Tiger. I don't think so. He will pass. I don't Tiger. know. You think well, so? Here, I mean, let's look at it this way: Do you see him passing okay. Tiger, or Tiger passing Jack overall? I see Tiger. Uh, no, I see him passing Tiger because Jack. I don't think Tiger ever ever plays another round of professional golf. 
I uh, I think that's unfortunately that's unfortunately going to happen too. I really do. I honestly think that. that I, I really think this. So. I I I think he's going to have a I, walking is going to be if he can walk again on his own. That that will be a major. Let alone playing another round of professional golf. If you yeah. can actually walk, hmm. yeah, so I, I think I, I think that that I would agree. be that would be a huge. Just being able to walk again on his own would be a huge win. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Everything else you. after that is secondary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and and pop in my sponsor here again. The Walk Report is sponsored by Arena Eats. Log on to the website arenaeats.opp. For uh, the ultimate fan experience with your favorite sports venue, Arena East Mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and UT delivery, how do you place your order? All right, so we'll move on, guys, from the golf. Let's move on to the Chirac itself. This is, uh, I guess they are going to have the all-star races in Vegas, and I mean in Los Angeles. Uh, oh, it's it's the, the Clash. It's not yeah. the All Star. The All Star race is going to be later on in the year at in Texas. Oh, sorry, the Clash. I apologize. That now that I'm reading it right, I'm sorry. Yeah, Clash okay. Exhibition Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. Yep. Yeah. Now it, I also guess what it said. It shakes up the playoff. It shakes up the 2022 schedule. So mm-hmm. yeah, they're going to run. They, <clears throat> they're going to run on the sixth. They're going to be in. In the sixth of Fe- on the sixth of February, my birthday, they're gonna right. be in LA. Then they're gonna go back to Daytona on uh, the next Sunday and have qualifying for the five hundred. That okay. Thursday, they're gonna have the twin one fifties, and the five hundred will be on Sunday the twentieth. Okay. And so the biggest shakeup is having is moving the um what did you do the clash a week earlier. Normally, the clash would be the week before Daytona, and then they would have – so the clash would be Saturday night, and then they'd have the qualifying on Sunday, yeah. twins on Thursday, truck race on Friday, Xfinity race on Saturday, and a 500 on Sunday. That's quite yeah. a list. Uh, the other big shakeup is they added another v- venue that they were uh, – where did they – where did they – I forget what was that other venue that they added that they have. They were kicking around the idea of. I don't remember now. And then they moved the Richmond race out of the playoffs to before to in August. And Kansas gets a playoff race next year. Um, Watkins Glen is the second to last race of next year. So I don't necessarily care for it. I like it being I like the second to last race being at Michigan. Because I thought that was more of a traditional home for a, you know. Yes. I don't like two back to back. I don't like back to back wild card weekends, where you have an anything kind of can happen kind of race, which is a, a road course. I don't particularly care for that. Um, I did hear that they're moving all the start times to noon or one o'clock Eastern, or uh, local, I should say. Okay. So, I'm good with that. I like that idea. Um, Saturday night races are going to start at 8. Sunday night races are starting at 7. Um, Bristol, the Bristol Dirt Race is going to be on Easter Sat Sunday next year for the first time. Oh. The first time they're ever running on Easter. Um, I thought it was a no-no. I think they only have, yeah, usually. It's not traditional. Well, I mean, that's the one think about that. I mean, you don't think about on... Easter Sunday, you don't think about NASCAR, and now you're going to get an opportunity to watch it. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely going to. That's be no plans, maybe. Uh, I'll race it. No. I mean, I, I you know, again, it, it says um, from the athletic, it's just something about uh, what, why the new changes could work, and why they may might not. So again, we'll have to wait and see how the changes impact. Um, how they impact NASCAR. The problem is, is NASCAR's a junkie. NASCAR's a junkie chiseling a high they haven't had in 10, 15 years. Yeah. They, they've they been searching. They've been looking for something that, that they just don't have. And that's Dale Earnhardt. They don't have yeah. a guy who represents the average fan. 
Right. And that's the problem. Is Dale Earnhardt was in every game. He was a nobody from nowhere in North Carolina who had who dropped out in the eighth grade and made a fortune driving cars fast. Yeah. All the guys coming up now are either coming from money or they're coming from family. Dale Earnhardt was somebody that everybody could identify with. Yeah. Working class, blue collar. His daddy drove on Saturday nights. And he never made it big. He was a local hero. And Dale Sr. did the one thing that, that Ralph never could. Make it big and win money and be successful. Right. And he beat all the good old boys. He beat yeah. the Junior Johnsons of the world. He beat the teams with money. The Richard Petties, David Pearsons. Daryl Waltrip. He beat them all. 76 times he beat them on the track. Seven times he beat them in the standings. He was everything that the average NASCAR fan is. A yes. blue-collar, homegrown, good old boy from the South. And and none of those – there's there's nobody in NASCAR who's coming up that's, that's that same that same brand. Even even the most popular drivers, even Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott comes from money now. You know, Bill Bill came in and he was an aw shucks, you know, good old boy. Mm -hmm. But his his family had money. They were very good car builders. They built the they built the best engines in the in the business. And they they were um They weren't. They weren't good old boys. They weren't, you know, no. every men, average guys. They all went to college. You know, even you know, even royalty, uh, the Allisons. They were all. They all came from money. They came from. And they had, um, family money got them in. And and, and senior, the eighth grade dropout with with one prospect, racing. That was it. He was either going racing or he was going to be in the in the in the poorhouse. Mm -hmm. And he made it work by God. And NASCAR just doesn't have that anymore. And they've been chasing that high for twenty years. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, again, you know, that's that's one of those things where you lose a pillar, a guy mm -hmm. that builds up your build up your sport. And, and, and not only that, but they lost him during during the event. Yeah, you know, it's not like it's not like um, Kobe. We were talking about him earlier. You know, right. the NBA lost Kobe, but they didn't lose him on the court. You know, it wasn't something. It, there wasn't an incident that cost the NBA Kobe. It was. It wasn't a basketball related thing. You know, with with NASCAR with Dale Earnhardt, NASCAR lost Dale Earnhardt. To a racing incident. Right. And NASCAR was forced to make changes to the sport. And and there was no one else coming in to replace him. Yeah. Which is not always easy to do either, you know. It's kind of hard to replace a legend. Mm. But but it's easier. <laughs> it's but the thing about the thing about most sports don't have to replace a legend, they died in the event. It's like Tom Brady dying during the Super Bowl or Michael Jordan dying during the NBA Finals. Yeah. You know, how do you replace that? And, 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 and the other thing about it is is that the other sports don't have to deal with the fact that, you know, most guys outside of, like, LeBron, they came, you know, they, were, they went to school. They were college educated. You know, Tom Brady, four-year degree from Michigan. Not an every, average, everyday guy that made it big doing something he loved doing. Tom Brady went to school, and, and he's got a college degree. And Dale Earnhardt was a, was a nobody from nowhere who took what he loved doing and made money doing it. Yeah. A shit ton of money. And, and, and again, you know, it, and he died during the event. The biggest event that we hold every single year. Dale Earnhardt, and and the thing is, the fact of the matter is that Dale Earnhardt shouldn't have died. NASCAR no, sh should have done. They they should have known 
when they had three other, four other drivers die within three years of, of it from that same yes. um, situation. They should have done more to ensure the safety of their drivers. I could go on for an hour. I don't blame you. Yeah, it was just it was a horrible, you know. I was watching it. Um, we were at one of the um, I forget which restaurant we were, we were at, but we were watching it too, and we saw the incident. Oh my god, this can't be happening! And you know the thing about Earnhardt was that he had he had sustained so many severe wrecks throughout his career, and that looked like an average everyday hit. Yes. It, was just, it was just you just hit the wall, and you know, minute goes by, and get it doesn't get out. A couple minutes go by, he doesn't get out. Right. Ambulance comes to take him away. Hey, it's senior. He'll be fine. Seven o'clock. It's over. He's gone. gone. No goodbye. No last ride. It's just over and done with. Yeah. Shall we talk college football? Yeah. I feel like I'm dragging this show down. No, I've got some. Uh, we can make that. We can make that move to. Uh, oh. College football. Um, nothing big, guys, really, as far as – I mean, I think the biggest I, – I, I have to say to, to Adam, I'm sitting at the USF Florida game, and it was great to you know to be back in, at, in, at the press box at USF. And, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the Bulls came up for the big second half. Um, you know, they didn't Looked win better. the game. They had looked better in the second half. But the game that I was watching on my phone – was the Oregon Ohio State game, and I have to be very, very happy to sit here and say, "Thank God the Ducks won." Go Ducks! <laughs> ah, the go Ducks! The Ducks quack um, for them to win. Uh, I think was the biggest in Columbus. In Columbus to, yeah. be, to be at there. noon. That not only did they win, they win, they went into Columbus, won at a on a noon kick. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I did I did get to watch a little bit of the Iowa Iowa State game uh, before Told I you. Went to the game. Um, yeah, I, so I, I, I yeah. I knew Iowa State was gonna get get beat. I thought it was gonna be bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but I had a feeling that Iowa was a much better team, and they're they're a scary team. I don't want to say Iowa anytime soon. <laughs> I think. Uh, excuse me. I went down the wrong tube there. Um, mm. Let me follow Arkansas, up too. Arkansas, <laughs> Arkansas beat Texas. That's an upset. Um, it's not heavy times in Austin. Uh, yeah, it's, and to see the reaction though from the fans. Yeah, it's not good times in Austin right now. No, no, no. But what happened with Arkansas when they beat Texas? They stormed out. The fans stormed out of the field. You know, um, and uh, they As got wanting to heavy, do. and they got a heavy fine for it too, about a hundred thousand dollars. Ah, we'll pay it to be I. Yeah, but in this day and age of you know the environment that we're in, I don't think it was a start a smart idea. I mean, I think it was pretty. I think it was you know very stupid on their part to do, to do that. Okay, I get the fact you you beat a a top ranked team, you want to celebrate, but that was not the way to do it. That, that was just that was just a ridiculous. No, system. I'm storming the field. Nah, I love storming the field. I do. I do. <laughs> I would. Storm in the court, storm in the field. Adam, it's awesome. You be, Adam, you would be the type of guy that would streak across the field naked if you had, if you had to. No. No, so if I could no. carry it away. No. I thought you would. No. Hmm. Well, I mean, the other, the other upset that I liked over the weekend, too, was Pitt beating Tennessee. I, that that, that okay. rubbed me the right way. A, 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 <laughs> You know, a Big Ten team uh, beat an SEC team was that's uh that's uh ACC, ACC. I'm sorry, yeah. Or Big Twelve or Pac. What the hell is that? That's uh Big East. No, Pitts. Pitts in the I think Pitts in the ACC. ACC. Are they? Pittsburgh's in the no. ACC. Yeah. ACC. They um, used to be in the in the Big East, right? I think the Big East Correct. is now the AC. Yeah, the AC. Yeah, that's yeah. the American yeah. Athletic Conference. Yeah. And that that league is awful. Well, and then now they're losing. Houston, Cincinnati, and UCF are all going to the Big Twelve. Good. Well, all actually, all, all the, three of those teams correct. are losing the conference to go to the. Big yeah, 12. but I got news for you. They're gonna they're gonna get blown every week. I mean, they're going to a bigger conference, and they are gonna get clobbered. And I mean clobbered. 
Well, I mean, I think I think Houston and UCF will play play well in the back in the. Well, I think I think Cincinnati. I think Lou Fickle is going to get the job at USC. I won't be surprised if he doesn't get that job by the end of the season. You think? What if Urban Meyer takes that job? No, he won't. He won't take it. You don't think so? No, he's not taking it. He even said, "I'm not leaving." But again, do you believe? Where have I heard that before? Do you believe anything he says? Because he said he's not a damn word. word. Yeah. And the way that Jacksonville plays, uh, he might get he might get tossed anyway before the season's over anyway. So he, right. you can't fire me. I quit. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll leave. I'll leave because of uh, health issues. Oh, my heart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll leave. I'll leave because of health issues. Yeah. Six yeah, months later, he's the head coach in the NFC. Yeah. But you were right is, about that game, Lou. Yeah. Which one? You had that one, Peg. Which SC one? SC Stanford. Oh, oh, yeah. But anyway, with those teams well, that leaving, they go to go to the um, Big Twelve. You know, it's it's gonna be like when Rutgers moved to the Big Ten. I mean, they can't they can't do anything right in that conference. You go to a, yeah, but I don't. You want to go because you want to get more money, more revenue, more TV time. But the end result is you're pathetic. And we want to watch yeah. it. Yeah, but those are the, 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 the Houston, Cincinnati, UCF. Who's the third or who's the fourth? Uh, I don't know who the – I don't the, – I think the fourth team, I think, is – is it Boise State? Somebody else came from some other conference that they have. Mm. Not all four teams are coming from the AAC. Oh, that's right. Just the three of them are coming from the AAC. Okay. And right. now with those two Boise State was one, though. moving out of the AAC – now it leaves you thinking, what the heck are they going to do? Because those are the three popular they teams should, in that conference. Hold up. They should take a run at, at South Alabama. I think that would be a good fit. Really? Um, maybe UAV? Well, you all you, you already have Navy in the conference. Why not try to get Army in the conference? Why you, not? Got you, could, you could take a shot at Army. Why you could take a run at Army. Yeah, why not do that? What, what about UAV? Air Force in there, too. While you're at it, what the hell? Uh, no, Air Force is in the Mountain West, but I can't see them leaving the Mountain West. No, okay. No. Um, I think UAB, South Florida, Army, maybe I, they I, can vote I, actually, Marshall? You know I, I think Memphis is the other team that's leaving the conference. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. I think Memphis is going to the going to the so Big if 12. If that's the case, then you have four teams leaving the AAC. Yeah. So, and all four of them are the all the good teams. Yeah, UCF, yeah. UCF and, and Memphis are all the good teams. So it's a good conference. Yeah, that leaves a, a big hole in the conference when those yeah. four teams move next year. I think twenty twenty four that they're moving. Any any uh, any? I'm looking at the top twenty five games this weekend. Anything jump out at you as far as? Um, I mean, I know Florida's playing Alabama. And- yeah. Yep. Yep. And I'm taking. I'm taking an upset here. You're taking an upset. I'm. I'm, I'm I am. Ears. I am. Go ahead. I'm all ears. I'm taking. I'm taking Florida over Alabama. I think Florida home can find a way to beat them. I do think it's an upset. A lot of people think I'm being crazy, but no, I, I think I'm not, here. I'm not saying you're crazy, but being that I got to see Florida in person last week, there is no way they hang with Alabama. That's kind of where I'm at. Really? Alabama hangs 40. You think think it's ugly early? Alabama hangs 40 on them? The line right now is 14 14 and a half. Alabama is a 14 and a half point favorite right now. I take Alabama and the points. They're going to beat Florida by 21 or more. What's the over under? What is the over under? I, I, I I would absolutely, being a Gator fan, I would love to see Florida beat them. I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I really, honestly, do not think it's going to happen. I don't. I don't. I as much as I, I hate Nick Saban, I want it to be true. The over under is fifty nine and a half. I yeah. just can't. See. I'm still not changing my mind. No, I think, uh, it, it's fine. It's fine. I, I don't. Again, when I looked at the at, at no, the it's your your call. Game. You're more than free. Wait, uh, Gator schedule. I had them pay to lose this game and then the game against Georgia. That was the two losses mm-hmm. that I had the Gators losing this year. The only two games I thought the Florida would lose yeah. would be against Georgia and Alabama. For sure, for sure. Well, no, Tulane, 
if Tulane can hang in against Georgia, I may not see why um, Florida could either. Or can either, you know. So well, Georgia, Georgia. The thing with Georgia is their quarterback position. That's the interesting thing. They and play a month. They they have the defense to hang with Alabama. Georgia has the defense to hang with Alabama. Yep. They do. I don't know if Florida's defense is capable of, of playing good enough to stop Alabama. Bryce Young. Mm. Stop Bryce Young. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I'm going to be watching the game. I don't. My game is going to start till seven, so I'll be watching the Florida Alabama game before I go to the, the stadium because USF is playing FAMU this week. Fresh I'll be funny. there. Yeah, we well US if USF struggles this week, we're in deep trouble because they shouldn't struggle at all. No, this should, right. They should dominate right off the gate. They should win this one going away, hands down, going away. Um, but. I'll be watching the Gator game before I go to the stadium. Um, cool thing, guys, real quick before I move on to the NFL. Um, Sam Barrington is the play-by-play guy with Jim Lauk, or he's the color guy for Jim exactly. Lauk. He came and talked to me in the booth while I was there the other day. Sweet. I interviewed him on – used to be called Bullseye. We don't do the podcast anymore on Tuesday nights, but we interviewed him, and it was awesome. I, I actually said, hey, I interviewed you. He gave me a fist bump. I'm like, oh, that's so dang cool. I got to see Sam Barrington in person after I interviewed him. Nice. Now, he couldn't see my face because we have to wear a mask in the press box. That's the rules, but I don't mind if – Yeah, if you get to be there. I get to be there, so I'm not – All right. Point. So, do so I get to talk? We can move I gotta, on. I got to I gotta, I gotta, I gotta pump up the boys real quick before we get out. We move on. Go ahead. They absolutely oh, yeah. run, run over Washington. Yep. And, and by run over, I mean they literally ran over Washington. Yeah. They, uh, I did not see that coming. I thought it was going to be a lot closer. And I, they look, no. oh, again, it was like I said after week one. People were asking me what I thought about it. And I was like, I the defensive adjustments early in the game was a, a blessing. A blessing because I was, for the last three, four years, Don Brown's defense has been blitz, 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 blitz. blitz. Just all blitz. You know, all gas, no break. And they couldn't stop a slant to save their life. And it's been awesome. The last, the first two games this year, and, and we haven't gotten the Big Ten schedule yet. We, right. we haven't, we're playing more, more Western Michigan, Washington. Washington looks a cakey. But Washington's a, a Power 5 school, so it's nice to see them actually be able to make adjustments to what Washington was trying to do offensively and then just run them over. And it was nice to see them not get away from it. But so often, I see teams doing something that's working, and they run it for a quarter, or you know, they have success for it with it for a couple of plays, and then they get away from it because, well, it's not going to be there all night. And I was harping on that Saturday night, last Saturday night, is if it's there, make them make you do something different. All night, the inside that that trap is a very simple guard sweep. Guard trap, you got you know, a seal here and a seal here, and you run the guard up in there. Guard gets a block in the second level and it or at the linebacker level, and then it's third level, it's one on one. And all you got to do is make you can make one man miss, and you can go the distance. And Blake Corman, 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 Corman <coughs> made a man miss and took it 67 yards to the house. And then they just when you thought it was going to get tight there at the end. And Washington started to make a couple of plays. They just run the ball down their throat, put another touchdown on the board, and sealed the deal. So that was a fantastic win last weekend. Who do you, who do you guys got this weekend? Uh, Northern Illinois. Okay. Should be uh, should be one of those ones that you win going away. Yep. You should win big. We're 27-point favorites. Um, ask a ask – a, uh, that other that team from Tallahassee about being a being a super super uh, favorite though. Yeah. Well, what is going on down there? They are in some me, serious trouble. Let me tell you one word to describe that team in Tallahassee that you're referring to. They're undisciplined. They've been undisciplined right. since Bobby Bowden left. That's been mm. it. They've oh, been undisciplined. And yeah. that's why they lost. That's why they lost on Saturday night. Um, they blew an assignment and lost that game. Yeah. Do you? Uh, me and my 
me and my dad, we were watching the Lions game on Sunday, and we were talking about no moral victories. And I was thinking about, right. you know, they come back, they come back against L, uh, Notre Dame, and got could have won that game, should have won that game, and um, pissed it away. And then they lose the game last Saturday against which was Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Yeah. Yep. And I was thinking about no moral victories. You know, no moral victories. You know, you you lose, you lose. And and they lost to Notre Dame and then they lay an egg against Jacksonville State. Team. They should have been they should have beat by forty. Let's see. And, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead, but keep talking. I'm gonna see who they're playing this week. Yeah. Yeah. And and then and you look at it and you think about the fact that Notre Dame's two and oh should have lost to, to Toledo, but they didn't. Notre Dame's two and zero, and and uh, the Seminoles are zero and two, and and how quickly it can it can flip on you, you know, and and it, you go from you go from looking at winning the ACC and competing against Clemson, and what you would expect to be a Clemson down year, because they're retooling after Etienne and um, Lawrence are with Lawrence and Etienne being gone, and the defense losing it, yeah, half a dozen starters, and you're thinking, okay. We can compete this year, and then you absolutely, you just absolutely shit the bed against Jacksonville State. Who mm. did I didn't even know Jacksonville State had a team. I didn't even know there was a Jacksonville State. There is, there is. Put it to you this way: the team that they're playing this week, they're not going to win either. Who they got this week? They're playing Wake Forest. Forget it. Good offensive team. They're, I guarantee you Wake puts up forty points on that on them. No way, no way. They're not going to win that game. No way. Wow, I didn't realize Wake Forest was that good. And Wake Forest is always a bottom feeder in the UCC, you know. But they're they're part- down there with that. They're down there with the the Georgia Techs of the ACC. Yeah, this is going to be one really big shit in the bed. Yeah. Yeah. F- 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 FSU starts zero and three. It's bad downhill for them because I yeah I'll see them I'll see them in a few months in a couple months from now yeah you sure you want to well, well, I'm yeah I'm, I'm going to Gainesville because I've never been to the swamp and the, the guy that yeah I'm and a chance is an FSU fan so that's why I'm going to that right game. get to you get to see the yeah that'd be like the Michigan Michigan State on a down year Michigan oh, yeah. State's on a down year hell right. yeah I want to go to that game. So, um, so I Michigan, think, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, maybe disappointed. So, like, well, but like, oh, what Michigan, the hell, I'll go anyway. Michigan gets a uh, gets a exact modicum of revenge this this week against uh, Northern Illinois. They yeah. uh, they got um, Rocky Lombardi from who played at Michigan State last year, and they state beat us twenty four twenty one, and trying to you know, get after him early and often. And, Make him regret his 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 life decisions. That's that's what I'm looking forward. Who does State play this week? They play. I don't uh, know. Don't really. Uh, they play somebody special. Yeah, Penn State playing, plays Auburn. Auburn they're yeah. playing. A, they're playing a top twenty-five team. I yeah, I think it's an SEC team. I want to say that's exactly who it is. Hang on, just a yeah. second. Top Tennessee. 25. No, Tennessee ain't in the top. Tennessee's not in the top twenty-five anymore. Right. No. Hang on, I'm going. I don't care because I hate state. Hang on a second. Hang on. Let me look back here. Um. Michigan State is playing Miami in Miami. Yeah. That's right. They're playing. The, they're playing the. They're gonna get the. Uh, that's gonna be a good ball game. I was going to show I that those, I think those two teams are evenly matched. Yeah. 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 What's the line on that? The line in that game is okay. Miami by 3? Just a second. 3. Let's see here. Miami's a 6 point favorite. And the over under is 56 and a half. State is two and zero. Oh, Half a lot and of And the Canes are one and one. Honestly, I I will take Miami, but I think I don't think it'll be very high scoring. I think Miami and the under, and, and I don't want the points. Because ESPN has. I think uh, I think State covers. They give Miami a sixty-six percent chance of beating Michigan State. 
I think like 24, 21, 24, 20, something in that somewhere in there. And I want to let you know that the ESPN gives the Gators a 29% chance of beating Alabama. Just want to throw that in there. Yeah, I just I just don't see it. I hope Lou's right. I'm rooting for I him, so but too. I hope I hope <laughs> you come back on here next week and he was right and I'm and I'm jumping for joy. They beat Alabama. I'd be I'd be, I'd be happy to be wrong. Because I would I would love to, I'd love to go to the USF game, have the Gators beat Alabama, have USF win their first game, and mm-hmm. have come home a happy camper both games right. my team's winning. So, yep. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yes. All right, so we'll end the show, guys, with the National Football League. Well, like we do almost every week. Yeah, right. like we do almost every this week. This is football season. Obviously, the big thing is Green Bay shitting the bed against the Saints. They laid an egg. That was um, that was a I was I expected much better. I turned than that. that game off. That was awful. I turned that game off when did other things. Man, that game sucked. <laughs> I could have slept through that whole game. I mean, that was just pathetic. Well, Green Bay was, so I mean, I didn't expect that. No, I didn't. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. You know, what, was Aaron Rodgers pissed off by not getting a job on Jeopardy or something? Come on. I don't know I what the problem was. Jameis, the Green Bay defense made Jameis Winston look like a world beater. Yeah. Yeah. Who did the Saints have this weekend? Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, Carolina's going to make him look like an egg beater. <laughs> I'll have to look at that later. Uh, yeah, Carolina. They're playing Carolina this week. Uh, the Giants, I think, are up 10-7. to seven, Currently? 10-7. Mm. Yes. We need Saquon Barkley to have a better week. How are you are you guys playing fantasy? Anybody? How's anyone? I am. I am. I am. I'm. Yeah, I'm playing fantasy this this year. I did not have a good week. Uh. Yeah. I I got brutalized. Um. My best player was I have um, Josh Allen, and okay. he did absolutely nothing. I have um. Uh. Oh God, um, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, and neither one of them. Barkley had three points. All God, what a miserable week! Tampa Bay's defense cost me three points. Mm-hmm. Justin Tucker had a good day though. Yeah, I held my buddy uh, in his fantasy team, and he blew the guy out that he played against. So. I got blown game. out. I lost for like 20 points this week. Hawkinson had a pretty good day. He had like 18. Right. Mm-hmm. But that was – it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. I I needed Tucker to have like 40 points on Monday night. He certainly did not. <laughs> when you so, need your kicker – when you need yeah. your kicker to have 40 points, you're 40 in trouble. Points. I was going to say. Yes. Yeah, that's – Yeah, when you when – you, yeah, that that's – that's hard. Well, I was I was picking fifth in my league, and by the time I got to by the time I got to my pick, I was like I was just like you know, everybody was gone. Everybody that I wanted was gone. Yeah, so I took I took uh, Taylor, and then well, and then Dobbins got hurt before the right. season even started, and so guys that I wanted and um what I, two years ago when I played two when I played with these boys two years ago. I got Christian McCaffrey with the third overall pick, and he scored thirty points week in and week out. Mm-hmm. And I had I had I had Russell Wilson and McCaffrey, and I ended up finishing third in the league because Wilson had a, had two bad weeks at the end of the year, and I ended up losing like by like ten combined points over the last two weeks. Right. So I ended up finishing third in the league, and so I I ended up getting I was like I, I thought about taking Wilson, but I ended up settling on Josh Allen. I was like, I'm happy with that. I, you know, I can live with that. And then Allen didn't have a great week. And 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 then Barkley only scored three points. I was like, I'm a lot. Yeah, I'm happy with Barkley. And, and uh, Taylor, and neither one of them, I think Taylor had like 14 points. It was just a rough weekend. Yeah. Right, sure. right, 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 right. Sunday was not kind to me. <laughs> and I didn't. 
I didn't. I, I thought about Hopkins, but then I was like, I don't know. And I ended up going away from him, and the guy I was playing had Hopkins, and he had 27 points. Yeah, so I, I had a rough weekend. So you guys want to look at the at the upcoming week two schedule? Absolutely. Yeah, yes, absolutely. yes, I do. Uh, yes, I do. The one o'clock games. It is the Patriots at the Jets. Um, you have Denver at Jacksonville, Buffalo at. Let me. Miami. I mean, let me pull up the money line like I did last week, real quick. Okay. Oh yeah. That was that was fun. I. Uh-huh. I um. I'll give I'll give you the money lines, buddy. In college, you give me the money lines in the NFL. Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay, so where do we want to start? What's the uh, what yeah, the line? Is, uh, Patriots, Jets. Patriots, Jets, New England minus five and a half. Okay. Uh, five and a half. Uh, I will take New England, but I'm going to give the point. Yeah. I think Jets will keep, or the Jets keep it close. I'm taking yeah, the Jets. So I'm not surprised. Well, the Patriots on the You've been doing, you, you know. Well, yeah, I know. They're your team. Um, the next game, buddy, is Denver at Jacksonville. Um, I think he froze up. Did he froze up? I think he did. I think he's back now. Can you hear me? I can yeah. hear you guys. Oh, okay. We, we, let me, yeah, let me. The picture, the picture froze up. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me still? Yes. yes. We can hear you. Yep. Okay. Do I have a picture? Yes. Yes. But just okay, good deal. Uh, yeah, it's because I'm not on the app right now. Okay. So we got Denver minus five and a half at Jacksonville. I think I'd take that all the way. Yeah, I like Denver. I like Denver and the points. Denver. Yep. Oh, what the hell? Next. Next would be. Buffalo at Miami. Oh, Buffalo minus three and a half. Uh, ooh, minus three and a half. I'm gonna take Miami to win outright. I'll take the Bills, but I don't think they'll. I think they'll win by one, or they'll win by two, or yeah. they're not gonna win by three or four. There's no way they'll cover that line because Buffalo yeah, got beat. Buffalo got beat pretty handily by Pittsburgh last week. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dissing on Pittsburgh, but Miami's. You know, Miami's a good football team. They held the Patriots last week. So, yeah, I can't see how that wouldn't be a. Well, Lou, the next game is uh, the Eagles and the 49ers. Yeah. Um. Let's see if I can pull up what the. Um, what? Oh, there he goes. He's back. Okay. It's Arizona minus three and a half. Or San Francisco. What am I talking about? San Francisco minus three and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to take in, Philly. In Philly. Well. Philly wins the game. Yeah, I'm going to take Philly to win out, right? Yeah. I'll take the they, look, they, look, they look better than, than I expected. Them. I mean, I expected them to beat yeah. um, Oh, Atlanta, but they looked better than I even thought they were going to. I like Philadelphia outright. Oh, I think San Francisco. I think San Francisco got exposed at the end of the game against Detroit last Sunday. Okay. Yeah. So then we get uh, the next game as my NFL page is loading slow. Um, yeah. What is the next game at one o'clock? Come on, load up here so I can tell him what the game is going to be. I'm going to have to go to my phone. I'll go to my phone. Man. That's fine. Right. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Uh, it yeah. is Rams at Indianapolis. Indy. Rams minus four and a half. 
Ra- I'll take I'll take the Rams and the points. That's kind of what I was thinking, Rams and the points. I just need I just need uh, Taylor to have a good day. <laughs> you need Jonathan Taylor to have a good day. Okay. Yes, I did. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll be all right with that. Um, I, you know what, Lou? I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping you're right on this one too. I'd like to see Indy upset upset the Rams at home. They're they're at home this week, so I yeah. So that would be nice to see them win at home. They lost at home last week, but it would be nice to see them right. Win. Um, the next game is the Las Vegas Raiders at the one and zero Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, they got Vegas minus five and a half. No, they got Pittsburgh minus five and a half. Sorry, I was gonna say Vegas is the favorite. Holy shit! No, no, it's, they, they were the first road team that's not the favorite. Every other road team has been a favorite up until then. I'm sorry about that. My bad. Um, I take Pittsburgh, but I won't take the points. No, I like Pittsburgh, but not the points. Yeah, I think Vegas keeps it close, and I, I, I would not be surprised if Vegas won. I'm taking yeah, Steelers. Either. Yep. Um, the next game is the Bungles against the Bears. I like, I like, I like the, I like. It's minus three and a half. Chicago minus three and a half. I'm gonna take Cincinnati to win outright. Bengals win outright. What do you think? Bengals. I think the Bengals go into Soldier Field and, and win. I think the Bears the Bungles, forget it. I think mm. the Bears win because of their defense. Their I think Joe Burrows and I I'm I like where Joe Burrows and Jamar Chase are. I like I like the Bengals to win. The next game is um Houston at Cleveland. Cleveland minus five and eleven and a half. Oh, take it out. That's a I lot. Think the Browns, yeah, yeah, the Browns in a I think the Browns in that one. But do you think they cover at minus 11 and a half? Yes. Yeah. You're take the Browns? Okay. Browns. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, I just can't. I can't. I can't take the points. I'm going to take the Browns, but I can't. There's too many points. Too many points? Mm. Okay. Um, That's the, a lot of points. The, the um, To conclude the 1 o'clock, we have the Saints at the Panthers. New Orleans minus three and a half. Saints. Saints. I like Carolina. I think Carolina upsets New Orleans. Well, you know, I, I hope they, I hope I hope Jameis Winston has those like five picks. So then right. he's back down to earth. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't, he I don't it back out. Everybody out there, I don't hate Jameis Winston, but he's all pumped up now because no. he had a great game. A little bit a little bit of that ego inflation, eh? Yeah. He needs yes. to come back down a little bit. Yeah. So uh the four o'clock uh uh, slate starts with the Vikings at the Cardinals. Uh, Arizona plus a minus four and a half. I take the Cardinals in the points. I agree. Yeah, Arizona is going to be one of those dark horse teams that no one yeah. Yeah. Get anything. And they're yeah. Be- yeah. Kyle Murray, Kyle, Kyler, Kyle Murray is looking really good. Yeah. Um. Then the next game is the Atlanta Falcons at the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay minus 12 and a half. Oh, God. That's a wow, big. big. Jesus. But yeah. the, the Falcons are who they are, so forget it. I think I, I, take I like Tampa, Tampa in the points. I take Tampa. Yeah. In the it's risky, but I take Tampa in the points. Yeah. Yep. Um, the 425 slate is Tennessee at Seattle. I'm going with the Titans. Titans. Okay. Titans. Okay. Did they have a bounce back game? Not yet. It's you know, I will say this Lou, though, it's it's hard. There he came oh. back. It's hard. Yeah, I'm back. It's hard. It's hard to to win in Seattle. Um, yeah, the, the line you know, on that is my uh, Seattle minus five and a half. I'll take the the Hawks, but not the points. That that's a lot. yeah. Points, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Even at home, that's a lot. Yeah. But compared to some of the other games, it's not that much. Well, yeah, 12 and a half. Mm-hmm. You got, and you got and an 11 and a half and a 12 and a half. That's, yeah, that's a lot of points. Um, the next one, guys, is the Cowboys at the Chargers. Cowboys. What do you expect from the Chargers? They got the Chargers minus two and a half. 
I'll take the I'll take the Chargers and the points. I like the Chargers mm-hmm. and the points. Yeah, I'll take this. Okay, Justin, I'm Justin good with that. Hubert, Justin Hubert's going to be another one of those diamonds in the rough type situations that no one expects him to do anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. a good quarterback when it's all said and done. Yeah, um, yeah, kind of like Philip Rivers. Right, and then of course the the Sunday night game is Kansas City at Baltimore. They got KC minus two and a half. Ooh, that's and that's hard too because Baltimore. Well, yeah, Baltimore's got a good defense, and that my buddy's got them as on, on his fantasy team. Yeah. Um, but no, Kansas City. Two, I, Lamar Jackson's never beat the Chiefs, so I'm going to take the Chiefs in the points. Yeah, that's kind of where I was at because that's only a field goal. Yeah, so they're 24, 21, right. 27, 24, 27, 21, something like that. Something you know, that's like kind that. of that's kind of that's kind of a you know a common football score. I could also right. see I could also see um, Mahomes and the Chiefs dropping forty on them. Yeah, yeah, they very easily could too. And that that Chiefs defense is pretty stout too. And and the the Baltimore kind of got exposed last Monday against the uh, against Vegas, right? And the Monday night game is the Lions at the Packers. They got the Packers minus ten and a half. Come on, minus the Lions are not allowed. Yeah, minus ten and a half. I take yeah. Green Bay, but not the points. I don't think they're agreed by that much. Eleven points. That's yeah. a lot of points to put. Ten up. and a half. Ten and a half. After yeah, Rogers put up weighed an egg last week against the. Yeah, Steelers. Mm, I don't know mm-hmm. about that. That's a lot of points. I, oh my yeah, that's God. a lot of points. That that's like that's to win that you have to win like thirty to seventeen. Buddy, what's the over under in that game? Just off curiosity. Oh uh, yeah, let me look it up real quick. Uh, I'm curious what the over what what Vegas has at the over under in the Lions Packers game. I'm just. Yeah, give me one second. No problem. Because of course the site that I was on didn't give me the um the over under. Right. Oh God, the the athletics got him at eleven and a half. Oh Jesus. Okay. Wow. Okay, let me see. That's a lot. Okay, that. Up. It's a, a lot. Shit point. Oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. It's not giving me the over under though. Money lines. Okay, here we go. So all the over and so okay here I finally found the over unders. Over under for New York and Washington was twenty uh, forty two and a half. New England, New York was forty three and a half. Denver and Jacksonville was forty four and a half. Buffalo and Miami was. Lost him again. Again. Hmm. <laughs> I oh, think dear. he's using. I think he's using his phone for both. Um, can you can you not hear me? We can hear you yes. now. We can hear you now. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you. I can hear you guys, but apparently you can't hear me. Right. Right. Okay. All right. So then let's just. Oops. That was the wrong button. Give me one second to get back there. Press the so button. Just wanna... Ew. How do you lose to a sucky team like that? I have no idea. The 49 and a half was the Lions. Lions Packers. Ooh. Packers are going to kill them. 49. Packers are going to kill them. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. 49 and a half. Okay. 49 and a half? Yeah. Are you sure it's not a typo? I, I, oh, I don't know. I take the yeah, under. That's what, I, don't, I don't. I don't. Yeah, really, I take the under. I take the under, and I don't. I take Green Bay, but I don't take the points. Yeah, um, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I take Green Bay. I take Detroit in the point category, and you take Detroit to cover. Detroit to cover, and then yeah, the under. There's no way that they're that, they they're not going to combine for fifty points. I don't think so. I mean, I could be wrong. No, no, no. I don't think those teams combine for fifty. No, because to get to 50, one team has to score 30. Yeah. 28, 28 and 28 is, is 
I mean, unless you guys both score 25, I mean, that's you have to have the Lions put up. Yeah. I mean, you could go that route. And they scored 30. But how much of that was in garbage time, though? Yeah. When when they got close, but they never did think because they couldn't get it done. And and San Francisco was playing more of a prevent defense. And and there was a, you know, they got a turnover and got back into the game. But I mean, they, they scored 33, 33 and 41. Which is seventy seventy four last week, but I don't. I, Green Bay's defense look, or Green Bay's offense looked so putrid last week. I just I don't know. Ten and a half, eleven and a half, hmm. and fifty points. Yeah, we'll have to wait and wait and see exactly what Packer team shows up on yeah Monday night. Football. Monday night. You know, I mean, I was really surprised by that. Yeah, me too. I was incredibly surprised because I thought, I thought for sure Green it was going to be the other way around. No, I thought it would be a closer game. I, I, I kind of expected Green Green Bay to turn over James Winston three or four times, not give up three or four touchdowns. Hmm. Right. Okay. Oh, well, gentlemen, we can. Uh, any final thoughts before we close this up? I'm good. I said everything I needed to say. All right. Well, well, guys, I just to was, uh, I, go ahead, go, Lou. Yeah, um, well, even though it happened on Tuesday, uh, my brother and my niece, uh, Savannah, just turned uh, both had a happy birthday um, over this past week. I will not reveal their ages. Not reveal their ages. Okay. Old enough to know better, too young to care. That's right. On either side. Yeah, right? I'll be 38 in two weeks, exactly. Two weeks from today. If only I was that young again. Right, Trump today, be I'm not looking forward to getting any older, so neither am I. <laughs> years ago, well, right. I, I have, I have, uh, you know, this will be the um, first year without my mom being here, so I don't know how, yeah, yeah. how I'm gonna be. I don't know how I'm gonna be on that day. Um, yeah, sure, can't promise. Her I get it. Years. <laughs> there will right. be a lot of tears shed on that day. I, I can, of course, promise that um but um if if nothing said let me go ahead guys i'll go through the sponsors real quick and then we can go do each other's show before we get out of here um again the walker report is part of in the zone sports radio and ngsc so you are being aired live on coast to coast entertainment uh the show is sponsored by arena eats log on the website arena eats.app for the ultimate fan experience at your favorite sports venue, Arena Eats mobile app, pre-order, express pickup, and in-seat delivery. How do you place your order? And we are sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com. It is the local choice. St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sending. It's about finding the peace within you, finding comfort to your life. And remember, guys, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. All right, guys, before we go, anybody want to put their show out there before we get out of here? Yeah. Enhanced Sports Show, Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. East Coast time. And then we're going to call us 512-543-4662. We got a big show planned this week. We got we got the finals. We got golf. We got the finals of the men's U.S. Open. We got, we got boxing. We got college and pro football predictions. We got baseball. We got some of the wazoo. I just haven't been able to carry it all in the two-hour show. So if you got time between five and seven uh, on Saturday, please give a call. I might need all the help I can get. On that note, good night. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, like I said, as I always do before I go, I want to thank the first responders and our soldiers. Thank you so much for all the sacrifices that you do for us. We could not be doing this without you guys. And, again, we do have a YouTube channel, guys. Go over there. Please share, subscribe, and like the videos and view them as well. That would be nice. But we will be Um, back, guys, next Thursday night, prompt at 8 p.m. I'll see you two next week. But until then, guys, this has been the Sports Nerd Bradley Walker. Peace. Good night, folks. All right. I got to get out of here.